Dr. Richard Miron is currently lead educator and researcher at Advanced PRF Education. And he's also an adjunct visiting faculty in the Department of Periodontology in Bern, Switzerland, where he completed his PhD studies since 2009, or in 2009. He has currently published over 200 peer-reviewed articles and lectures internationally on many topics relating to growth factors, bone biomaterials, and guided bone regeneration. For the past three years, Dr. Miron has been recognized by Dentistry Today as being one of the top 100 C providers in the country. Um, I'll be frank with you, I've taken his course before and it will absolutely make your head spin. If you're doing PRF right now in your office and you're not doing it the way that he is gonna, or he has taught me how to do it, you're missing something. So I would highly recommend his course outside of what he's gonna talk about here today. Um, and I think if anybody went to the course who's in here today right now was there yesterday, as he did do a course here, it was probably fantastic. So, um, moving on, he recently awarded an international prize in dentistry and is widely considered as one of the top contributors to implant dentistry, having won the T.I. Andre Schrader Prize, the IADR Young Investigator of the Year, implant dentistry, as well as the IADR Sokransky Research Award in the field of periodontology in 2020. He has written four textbooks uh, on the of dentistry, including his bestseller in 2019, Next Generation Biomaterials for Bone and Periodontal Regeneration. All right? I'm going to start. Dr. Mick, Rick Miron here to be able to present to us. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I want to thank the IOMT for having me here as well. Uh, I lectured here about two years ago. It was a great time. And I, uh, I have the pleasure as well to do PRF courses. Um, for those that don't know the work that we do, um, we're really specialized in growth factors and biomaterials. Uh, I have a very different background than, than most people. I'm Canadian and I grew up in Canada to dental school like most people, but I pursued a PhD in molecular and cell biology. And I did that PhD in Bern, Switzerland. Um, for those that don't know Switzerland, uh, as you guys know, most of the major implant companies are located in Switzerland. So whether it be the ceramics, uh, most of the one that Sammy uh, was just speaking about are located in Switzerland. Uh, Stroman's located in Switzerland. And so I, I won a big research grant and it allowed me to travel anywhere in the world. It was fully funded by the Canadian government. I decided to move to Switzerland, and I lived there from 2009 to 2016, and I had the pleasure to work with these two gentlemen. They were my supervisors back then, and uh, I lived there till 2016. These guys are very well known for Tony periodontal regeneration, and I'll show you some of the stuff that we do today um, with respect to how we try and save teeth. Uh, Danny's well known for implant dentistry. He was the president of the ITI. Uh, long story short, on his background, a very young Danny Boozer went to Stroman headquarters, which was not a dental company at all. It was a titanium company. They were making watches and certain medical instruments. Uh, he was reading the research on uh, brain marks work from Sweden. And he said, I want you to make me one of these little titanium rods. They started doing that. They started selling some dental implants. Today, Stroman's one of the big players, of course, in the market for implants, and it's thanks to, to that guy. He's also the inventor of GBR technique, so anybody that does guided bone regeneration, uh, it was all him that pioneered that. Today, Stroman is doing a lot more work, and I go to Switzerland still frequently on uh, zirconia implants. Uh, Sammy presented many of the Stroman uh, implants that are ongoing. Uh, they're, they're trying to get catching up to speed, so to speak, compared to the other companies, uh, but it's a real big uh, market, and I think the earlier you get involved with zirconia implants, as Sammy discussed, probably the better for your practice. Um, I just spent a lot of time in preclinical research. The cool thing about my job is before a dental implant or a new biomaterial goes to market, always remember that there's years, and it's literally years of research uh, that's done before they're ever launched. And so we get these new surfaces or we get new uh, titanium surfaces. I mean, the Zeramax implants, we did research with these implants in 2009, 2010. And that's when we were starting to develop the surfaces. Uh, years later, after animal research, after preclinical work and a couple of human studies, then they finally get launched to market. So actually today in the lab, we're doing a lot of work with biomaterials that won't be launched till 2023, 2024, and I get to kind of see what's going on in the future of dentistry. I think PRF is a great technology. I think it has its limitations, but of course, 
when it comes to blood flow, you know, you, you always require blood flow for healing. The older you get, the lower your blood supply gets. The more you have medications, diabetes, smokers, etc., the lower the blood flow gets. And having this technology that's able to concentrate these growth factors and use them for regenerative purposes is really uh, an amazing thing. Just out of curiosity, put your hand up if you're currently using platelet-rich fiber. And I'm just, I would like to know out of the audience. So there's about half you guys that are using PRF. Um, the other half, like I said, when it comes to implant dentistry, there's really a benefit, and I have the pleasure of running these one-day programs with IOMT and other groups. So for those that want to learn kind of what we're doing today, um, we offer these courses where you can learn the technology in about a day. Um, a great uh, great work that we've done over COVID, you know, COVID was very uh, difficult for researchers because, of course, most of our projects got, got cancelled, but it allowed us to basically write, rewrite a textbook on platelet-rich fibrin. This book right here will be available uh, in 2021, early or late, later this year. It's already available for pre-order, um, and it's a fantastic book. I wrote it not by myself. Uh, Bob Marks and many uh, co-editors helped write it. And what's very different about this book is that we don't just have all the text like we did in the first version of the book, but there's 45 videos in this textbook, which means that if you want to learn how to do a gingival grafting procedure with platelet-rich fibrin, in the actual book, there's little QR codes. You flash your phone over that little QR code, a video comes up and you get to see how PRFs used for implant dentistry, for GBR, for sinus grafting, for gingival recession. And I think that will really help the learning curve for, for young people uh, that are new to uh, this field. Um, our group in Bern, uh, a lot of people know this already, but i just like to highlight it's not just me, of course, the University of Bern is a big team. Myself, when you look at Expertscape for all the experts in platelet-rich fiber, and we're really ranked at the top. Myself and Yu Feng uh, spent some time do doing preclinical research with PRF. Masako's done a lot of work, Tony Schoolian's done a lot of work, so a lot of our guys are, are really well known in this space particularly. I would say probably the biggest technology difference between what we've done in the past and today is the ability to extend the working properties of PRF. So for those that work with PRF, it lasts two, three weeks. Um, today we can last, make PRF last four to six months. Okay? So there's ways that naturally you can take you know, your own blood and you can basically make collagen membranes, so to speak, that'll last months. And you can, instead of using collagen membranes, do that completely naturally with your own blood. And that's been the biggest technology differences. Um, and I'll share how that's done. And for those that want to learn, like I said, we offer courses where you can learn some of this new technology. At the basis of PRF, um, the most important thing is you're trying to concentrate cells based on their density. Okay, so we've learned over the years that, of course, platelets, these guys here are the ones that help with regeneration, and you're using a centrifuge to separate layers based on their density, right? So light guys go to the top, middle guys are the white blood cells, and heavy cells, red blood cells, go to the bottom. So you're basically using a spinner, and you're spinning blood. Uh, it's very important how you do it. You know, there's a lot of data uh, behind that, and I'll share some of that today. But I want to talk about the clinical indications of how we use it. And uh, at the very end, I'm going to talk about how we've been using it today all naturally in the field of facial aesthetics, which is something that's growing, and I think dentists have a real big opportunity. Okay, so when you spin blood and you don't use clotting factors or anti-clotting factors, you get a fibrin clot. And depending on the tubes that you use, this can either be liquid PRF or solid PRF. So there's differences there. There's many growth factors. I'm not going to go through too much here because I want to save a little bit of time. But at the basis, the two main things that you're doing is revascularizing these tissues. So you take blood, you spin it. After you spin, you get different layers, and then within specific layers, you can have some that will help with, you know, regeneration, blood flow. You can isolate just white blood cells with help, which help fight infection. Uh, you can do many different things depending on how you spin uh, from the blood. So the goal of the centrifuge, of course, is to separate cells based on their density. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but just very quickly. For those that have used PRP before, have heard of it, it uses chemical additives. So there's always anticoagulants that are included. And one of the things that's very important for healing is just think of this logically. If I cut my arm and I start bleeding out, if I don't actually clot, you're not going to heal, right? And patients that are on anticoagulants, of course, they're bleeding more frequently and they're going to heal a little bit slower. So one of the biggest things with PRP is you actually add chemicals, they're anticoagulants, it prevents clotting, and any time you take PRP and put it back into the body, you're preventing clotting, so you're actually delaying healing slightly. 
You get the benefit, of course, where you get a lot more platelets. You can concentrate them 10, 15 times more. But you get the bad thing where you know, you're adding chemicals to prevent that clotting cascade, which is very important. The biggest technological difference with PRF is that you take away all the chemicals. As long as the tubes are made a certain way, it won't clot in the tube or it can clot in the tube. And then you can use that for regenerative purposes. You can use this for knee injections, for facial injections to look younger. You can use it for dentistry, membranes, extraction sockets. So there's a lot of applications. Because at the basis of regeneration, of course, you really need uh, blood flow. So that's what a PRF membrane looks like for those that have never seen it. Um, this is just an instance where we can mix it with a bone grafting material. So we'll take actually these PRF clots here, cut them up into small pieces, and then we mix it with a bone grafting material. And when we do this, we can drastically improve the healing uh, of this bone graft. You'll see the properties, the mechanical properties are much improved. So the graft is actually made sticky uh, for those that have never seen this, okay. I'm just going to fast forward through this because I don't want to waste too much time. You mix in the bone grafting material, you add in the liquid, and this is what you end up with. Okay? And of course, if you're going to do a sinus grafting procedure, you know, via lateral approach, it's much easier and much better to put in a sticky consistency. When you look at this, if you're doing any kind of augmentation procedure and you acquire a bone graft, uh, especially in vertical augmentations, it's much improved to have the ability to have this stick in. On top of that, you're going to have all the growth factors from the blood, which is going to help revascularize this tissue, which is going to speed the healing. Okay? Um, in our textbook, I wanted to show kind of how far we've gotten, because we put one chapter in, in the medical space, and I just wanted to show kind of uh, things that are ongoing and, and in the medical space. Um, the body is an amazing thing, I'm sure everybody knows. You know, you have the capability of healing yourself, and by taking the, the wound healing properties of your own body and concentrating the right cells, it's actually amazing the regenerative properties that you can achieve. So when I look at a case like this, this right here was actually one of my colleagues who lives in Naples, I'm, I'm, I live in Sarasota, and his wife had a melanoma on her toe, it's a cancer. And doctor said amputation. So required an amputation, said too hard to heal, blood flow is too low in that area. So of course in, the, you know, in your little toes, there's not very much blood flow going there. If you remove a cancer and you try to heal that site, it doesn't heal very effectively. And she said, absolutely not, I don't want to be amputated, I live in Naples, you know how uh, I like to wear sandals and on and on and on, I don't want to be amputated. So doctor said, well, we can do a, a graft, a skin graft. And they went to her arm, they took out a chunk of skin, and they put it down there. But he said, look, this is 50% chance this will work. Um, it didn't work. Okay, so the skin graft is there. You can see it's highly infected now. It didn't take. There wasn't enough blood supply to this area. And then this, my buddy, so another dentist, called me up and he said, look, Rick, I know you're doing all this research with PRF. Do you think you can do something? Because doctor said in a week from now they're going to amputate. And I said, well, you know, no harm, we can try. And what we did is, and, and we taught this yesterday, how to make custom shaped PRF membranes, is we take blood, we, we will grab four or five vials, we really concentrate the liquid PRF, we take that, we make a custom graft, and we use these trays. And if anybody wants to see what these look like and how we do this, you can come over to my booth uh, in the other room afterwards. And I just laid it down over that, and I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I just put it there with a non skit gauze pad. We started taping it, okay, and then it wasn't staying, which is taping here, so we taped it all, all the entire foot a week later. Boom. Okay, it healed. Didn't require amputation. And that's where I always say it's amazing. And when you actually see these things living, you know, we went back in a week later, opening it up, not sure what to expect. Is it still going to be black? Is it going to be worse? What's going on? And you open it up and you see something like this, and that ended up healing. Okay? So she still has her toe. And that's why I always say the body is just an incredible thing. Um, other cases, these are other doctors that we work with very closely. These are diabetic uh, wounds, and this will not heal. This has been there for two years. There's a growing number of people that have diabetes, and these types of wounds require uh, very serious attention. Uh, a case like this required amputation. This didn't heal for two years. Lack of blood flow. And the way that we treat these as well is we create, well, here's an example of a custom graft. There's the PRF, okay, the bio, the bio heat trays. We make these circular uh, types of custom 
PRF graph. So for those that are used to you working with the membranes, okay, there's protocols today that instead of, for example, over a GBR procedure, laying down three, four membranes, you can make a custom graph. And we have the protocols and the technologies to do this. We'll actually take these and lay this over our, our GBR flaps, et cetera, and make them custom shape. So you can make this custom shape. So there's the circle there. Um, and in this case here, will be, will be utilized for um, these, these diabetic wounds, okay? So there's the circle, and we'll go ahead and use that on these defects, inject a little bit of the PRF around the site, and sure enough, like I said, I have a friend, uh, his name's Dr. Pinto, he only gets the cases that are supposed to be amputated, and he's in Guatemala, and before they get amputated, they always try to do this and save some limbs, and he says probably about 80 to 90% of the time he can save these limbs, okay? Uh, just by revascularizing these tissues uh, with the body because, of course, blood supply is low in this area, but you can take blood from somebody's arm, you can concentrate those proteins and deliver them. So that, that place that didn't have the blood flow, you can, you can take it somewhere else, concentrate them, and then deliver them, which is kind of cool uh, to see all the work. That's Dr. Pinto right there, and he's doing a lot of work with us. Um, actually, here's a little video of, of how he does this. So again, if you want to make a custom graph, you can either use um, the little trays that are provided, or in this case here, you can use any of your circular bowls, okay? There's a specific protocol to do this, so of course they make the graft, and that's what it looks like once it's been created. Um, and then they'll take this, and literally on the, this uh, massive defect, the first thing they do is inject some liquid pure F, uh into the area, so around the site, just to try and, again, bring in the blood flow to that area. And then afterwards, they take this custom graft, and you literally just place it on the area, you compress it, okay, and then you use a non-stick gauze pad. And I kid you not, like I said, when you see this technology, um, it's not very hard to do, and if anybody has these kinds, or you know somebody that has these kinds of wounds and you're doing PRF in your practice, you know, you can easily make these things and, and try it out with a non-gauze pad. We have all the protocols down. Uh, it's amazing, the, the body's healing potential. Now, I work specifically in the perio field, so all my training when I was in Switzerland, I was there for six years. I was in the perio department. I did uh, all clinical work and my PhD in, in, in perio, and we tried to save teeth, okay? That was the main goal. Of course, in Switzerland, they're really big into implants. And uh, if you do place implants, like I said, uh, I strongly recommend you guys go zirconia. But if you can save teeth, I highly recommend you save teeth as well. And people have learned over time, it's a lot easier to maintain teeth than it is implants. And when you look at the long-term data from the Dr. Boozers who've been doing this for 30, 40 years, there's implant complications. It's not a perfect world. Uh, with zirconia, luckily, the perimplantitis levels look lower than they are with titanium, but we still need long-term data. We try and save every tooth that we can. And um, in the space of having pockets five, six, seven millimeters is really where we put a lot of research focus. Many years ago, in the first version of this, our textbook on PRF, you guys have probably seen this case before because it's in our book, we would take the platelet-rich fibrin, we would cut it up into small pieces, we put it in the intraboni defect, and we would allow healing to occur. Um, and this would work pretty much as well as a bone allograft. So there's been a lot of studies that have shown, you know, this will work well. You need certain criteria, so you need your walls uh, and other things. But long story short, you could take some of these pockets and, you know, maintain them much better uh, going forward. One of the big things that has been very well utilized in Switzerland uh, and many European countries and not utilized as frequently in, in North America is lasers. Um, lasers are really big tools that are utilized in all of medicine, and I think they're just fantastic tools. I mean, I couldn't practice dentistry today without a laser, quite honestly. And I'm amazed at how many people don't know very much about lasers. I highly encourage people to learn because it's just an amazing technology, and it's also a natural technology. And if you think about it just logically, in almost every other field of medicine, they've adapted laser use for many different things. I always call it precision medicine. You know, if you were to get any kind of eye surgery, the days of taking a blade and cutting your, your cornea and on and on and on, those days are over. They use lasers, and with lasers you can specifically target certain, you know, chromophores or, uh, you know, water versus non-water. It's amazing what you can do with lasers. And the same technology exists in dentistry. Um, just out of curiosity, how many people here have a laser or use either Erbium Yeg or ND Yeg? So there's quite a big number. That's good. Um, if you're young, 
honest to God, I don't think it's possible to practice dentistry in 10 years from now without the use of lasers. I think you're going to be way behind the curve. And it's something that we've done a lot of, lot of work with. Um, Dr. Schoolian, my, my supervisor, and Frank Schwartz are two people that have done a lot of work in the perio field with lasers. If you want to read about it, you can just go on PubMed and put both their names in. More than 20 articles specifically on lasers. Um, Tony taught me everything there is to know about uh, lasers and how to use them, etc. Globally, like I said, there's four categories of lasers. A lot of you guys have heard of diode lasers. These are kind of the cheaper ones that we don't really utilize, but of course, there's still advantages. Um, CO2 lasers as well are a little bit more aggressive. The two that are most commonly utilized are ND YAGs and Erbium YAGs. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of LANAP. Okay, and if you go to any of the perio conferences, AAP, et cetera, you'll see a lot of these speakers talk about LANAP, which is, you know, stands for Laser Assisted New Attachment. Uh, procedures, as well as Erbium YAG is very good for removal of calculus and other things, and I'll show some videos of how we use this. At the basis of lasers, so very simply, the way that it works is you have wavelengths here are just absorption curves, in blue here I have water, so one wavelength is Erbium YAG at 2940, and the way that they figured this wavelength is they said, where is water most absorbed when the laser's fired, and that's an Erbium YAG. Okay, what that means is that if I fire a laser and it reaches a surface that has any water, it ablates right away. So if you think of cells, cells are primarily water. I fire a laser, if it's erbium yag, it hits the surface, it hits a cell, boom, it ablates. Okay, so anything with calculus, cells, tissues, it ablates single layers. And I'll show you how we use that in facial aesthetics to remove moles, age spots. I mean, these lasers are amazing. On the other end of the spectrum, NDAG, this is one that has a very low coefficient for water, which means it's not getting absorbed by water, okay? Which means that when that laser fires and hits the surface, it's not, it's, it doesn't absorb with water, so it keeps penetrating, 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 penetrating. And that laser is utilized more for stimulating a tissue. So one's ablating the tissue because it's getting absorbed by water. The other one's penetrating into the actual tissue. So here's a figure from Dr. Schoolian's work here. Erbium YAG, like I said, right on the surface, it ablates right away, it removes single cell layers basically, okay? And you'll see how this works. ND YAG is used to penetrate inside the tissues, okay? And that's used as the LANAP protocol. You wanna stimulate the PDL and you help it regenerate. So you absolutely need both these lasers for different things. Um, and they're utilized, and I'll show you how they're utilized. Now, if you've never seen uh, a laser in use, this video is just amazing, okay? This is an implant that failed, and there's obviously calculus on the surface. Watch this video, okay? Okay, that's just a laser firing. It's Erbium YAG. No heat is generated and it's got a high affinity for water and uh, calculus on the surface. Now, how in God's world are you gonna clean this implant surface more effectively without a laser, right? If you're one of these guys, especially with titanium, it's just awful. I see people with titanium and they're just scratching away at these implant surfaces, removing the calculus. And as Dr. Nubisi presented, that's just a bomb of titanium particles that are about to go off and that's corrosion that's about to happen. So. Ideally, of course, you're going to use zirconia implants, but in the case there's many titanium implants that are floating around that need to be cleaned, the most effective way to do this is, is using lasers. We do this around teeth as well as around these implant surfaces. So same technology exists for um, using these lasers around teeth, and it really cleans out the pockets. After that's done, we then introduce uh, platelet-rich fibrin into these pockets to help them regenerate. So now instead of doing surgery like we were doing you know, six, seven years ago, we'll cut up these little PRF membranes and then we just tuck them into the pockets, okay? And the way that we do this is when the PRF is there, we use little cord retractor instruments, just tuck them in the pockets. Don't need any sutures. Um, you know, it's just an amazing technology that you can use. And again, this is all natural. When you have a laser and you have you know, a centrifuge already in your office, this doesn't cost anything. You know, this procedure here cost me maybe $5 for four pure F tubes, that's it, right? And I'm a big believer, you know, the more and more I advance in my career, and I've done a lot of research, looked under microscopes, 
The more I can go with natural biomaterials, of course, always the better. I'm a big believer in using things that are more natural. Um, and the laser and the pure are two modalities that it's 100% natural. You're not introducing any foreign body objects here, okay? Um, and it's amazing sometimes you see these results and you know, that's just technology that's being utilized there. Now, another thing that we've been doing a lot of research in is a lot of people will use these devices where they have Arrestin or they have perio chips with antibiotics or chlorhexidine. You know, I look at this stuff and I understand why people use them. Uh, I'm not a big believer in using antibiotics unnecessarily, to be honest with you, but I don't want to discard all the researchers that have done or utilized these products. But I look at this stuff and I say, well, this is an antibiotic or it's chlorhexidine that you're delivering in a pocket, right? And this stuff costs $30, $40 each. It's, it's not cheap. And I remember looking at this and saying, well, you're delivering the good stuff, let's say, that's the antibiotic, and that's debatable, but you're delivering it with a polymer. And polymers are very inflammatory. And polymers need to be degraded. And polymers are sitting in those pockets, and they're causing an immune response to your body, which is not good. But you need something there, a carrier system, that's going to deliver the antibiotics for two to three weeks. Okay? And so that's what the polymer is used for. They put in a, a polymer that's attached to an antibiotic. It degrades over two to three weeks. I remember looking at that data and saying, well, you know what? I can easily do a delivery system with platelet-rich fibrin, deliver it in a liquid form. It will clot in the pockets and I can deliver the exact same concentration of antibiotics. And I can do a full arch instead of $30 per tooth, I can do the full arch for less than $30, okay? Um, and that's an amazing technology. If anybody wants to see how we do this specifically, we use these little female-female lure locks, and I have some here, and we just take the liquid pure F and put in the antibiotic. If I do six teeth, I do six times the concentration of Arrestin, put it in, mix it, cost a few bucks, you go to your arch, bing, 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 okay? Um, again, that's a much, much more natural delivery system for these, these types of molecules. And I always show these slides, and just to put things into perspective, you know, when we do these research, there's a lot of data, and I haven't presented it all, showing that lasers, you'll get an extra millimeter or so. You can add PRF into the pocket. The research shows that you get an extra millimeter there. Maybe you add antibiotics. I'm not sure exactly. The randomized studies are still ongoing. But the reality is, is that there's a lot of technology out there that favors uh, new attachment. And so when you have these pockets that are five, six, seven millimeters, you know, the ability to bring these back to three, four, that's a big deal for these patients because they can maintain that long term. And that's where I think uh, these lasers and, and the use of these natural products uh, are very useful. And I always say to, to patients and really my, my boss at the clinic that I work in, Sarasota, I say, it's amazing because if this person goes across the street to get their periodontal work done, they're probably only getting scaling and root planing. If they have an implant that has calculus, et cetera, on it, they're just, they're, they might try and take instruments or titanium brushes. I see all this people using these brushes and just creating all this titanium particle release. And I say, it's amazing. If they go across the street, that's the therapy that they're getting. If they come to our clinic, they're getting something that's a lot more advanced. And that's where, you know, especially at the AEP Academy of Perio, I tell people, look, there's a big gap of differences here and the whole field needs to improve. This is one area, like I said, People can do this very easily. It doesn't require a lot of skills. You don't even need to play sutures. I mean, it's very straightforward, and you can save a lot of teeth that will otherwise keep you know, going from six millimeters to seven to eight to extraction, implant. You're not doing your patients a big, big service because you can maintain teeth a lot better. Um, when it comes to platelet-rich fibrin, um, this is probably the most cited work that I've done personally on, on this topic. It was published earlier in 2019. We did this work in 2018, and it was titled A Novel Method for Evaluating and Quantifying Cell Types in Platelet-Rich Fibrin and How We Introduce Horizontal Centrifuges. I'm not going to go through the data. It's a very uh, scientific paper, but I just want to kind of summarize what we found and kind of the conclusions here. When you look at cells that are found in blood, these are the actual live living sizes. So this is a red blood cell. This is a white blood cell. This is a little platelet here, okay? You'll notice the platelets are the small guys, so when we use a centrifuge and we separate based on their density, okay, platelets are gonna go to the top. Look at the size of the white blood cell and the red blood cell. Okay, they're very similar in size. And what that means is that when you use a device that's separating based on their density, it's much harder to separate these white blood cells when compared to uh, platelets. And most devices can't do this effectively. Okay, so when we actually looked at the data, 
and we were, you know, discussing designing uh, a, a horizontal centrifuge. The reason why we did it was when you look at a normal fixed angle centrifuge, the way that cells separate is based on the difference between the g-force at the minimum of the tube and the maximum. Okay, so on a fixed angle centrifuge, you have a minimum, you got a maximum, and then cells will separate based on this gradient difference. Uh, of course, if you put this tube completely horizontally, and those are called swing out buckets, so they actually, you put the tubes up and down, and I have a little video to show people, and they swing out, then you can create a much bigger separation, much bigger difference between the min and the max. That means that those red blood cells get pulled down much more effectively. Okay? And I recommend people, when you're making platelet-rich fibrin, you know, these horizontal systems will give you a much uh, better outcome. The biggest difference between the two, when you spin on a centrifuge that's fixed angle, this thing starts spinning fast, all the cells go poof against the back wall, and then they go up or down depending on their density. So if you're a red blood cell, you start here, you go boom, and then you start going down. If you're a little platelet and you start here, you start spinning fast, you go boom, and then you got to climb up this mountain, okay? You got to basically climb up that mountain in the next eight to 12 minutes while all these red blood cells are coming down. And there's many more red blood cells than there are you know, white blood cells or platelets. So the problem is everything gets stuck on this back wall and platelet accumulation, it takes a lot longer to reach this upper surface. A little platelet that starts down here has got to climb all the way up this hill while all those red blood cells are coming down. You go horizontal, little platelet that's here, he just free passes, walks a straight horizontal line to the upper surface. And if he bangs into red blood cells, they can dodge each other because they're not getting accumulated on the back surfaces there. Okay? I like to show this figure, uh, this table, sorry, because a lot of people forget this stuff. This is the density of cells, platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells. You can see platelets are the light guys, red blood cells. Look at the frequency distribution. 200,000 per mic microliter, 5,000, 5 million red blood cells, okay? So I always say this rule and I explain it as the one to 1,000 rule. For every one white blood cell, and that's the cell that's gonna help fight infection, etc. for every one of these guys going upwards to the top, there's 1,000 red blood cells coming down, okay? And that's why it's not very effective to, to try and you know, separate these layers on a, on a fixed angle centrifuge. So if you've never seen a horizontal one, um, I had one here, we used it in the course yesterday. It basically just swings out. So these buckets, you put the tubes in up and down, when it starts spinning, they go completely horizontally. And that allows the cells to separate much more effectively. Okay? And that's what we've done a lot of the work with BioPureF. So there's several advantages. You get bigger differences between the RCF min and max. Um, and then for those that use PureF, I'm sure you've seen some of these layer separations here. Um, with the horizontal system, it's even distribution of cells. It's much more clear cut, uh, the different layers. And if you've ever um, seen any of these little red dots on the back walls, essentially what's going on is all the cells, they get jammed to the back here. Okay, whereas here, the cells can more easily just free pass. Um, and this is a, a nice picture here. If you ever look very closely at your PureF tube spun on a fixed angle centrifuge, you'll see all these little dots here, okay? And that doesn't appear uh, only on one surface on the, on the horizontal one. So the reason why all these little red dots are all located there on the back is it's a fixed angle. So when you started spinning, all the cells on that fixed angle, they all basically jam against that back wall and some of them actually splatter back there and you see all the little red dots there. Okay, so if you want to improve your concentration of platelet-rich fibrin, like I said, get a swing out bucket centrifuge. Um, and there's been a lot of work that's been done on this topic that I'm just going to skip through here. Okay, you can read a lot of the publications on our on biopureff.com. A lot of our group's papers are located there. You can also go to Google and just type in Google fixed angle versus horizontal centrifuges, and Google will explain to you what they're both meant for. The fixed angles are really meant for um, separating based on the density, uh, and the horizontals are more effective for things like platelet-rich fibrin. Okay, so that's uh, all available there. The last little thing that I'm going to share, I'm just going to spend another five minutes here just talking about what we're doing uh, right now. Is my time up right now? or I'm good? Okay, good. Um, tubes. I want to I talk briefly about this because it's very, very important. 
Many of the tubes for platelet-rich fibrin uh, don't disclose that some of them have chemical additives inside of them. So we designed a little water test to make sure that people understand. If you do PRF with red tubes, white tubes, whatever you're using, some of them actually have chemicals even though it's not disclosed, okay? The difference between the two tube types, like an implant, the more hydrophilic I make it, the more water-loving it is, the more it's going to form a clot. So we use these red lids to make the clots. The white ones are made of hydrophobic material, so they push water away. If it's a little platelet, it has a hard time binding because it's hydrophobic, and it stays liquid longer. So if I want to do knee injections, facial injections, we use the white, blue, whatever, hydrophobic tubes. When I want to make a membrane, I make a hydrophilic tube. The more hydrophilic I make that tube, like the more hydrophilic I make an implant surface, the better the clot's going to be. And you can make these really huge clots when you understand the science. The more hydrophobic I make a tube, the more water repelling it is, the less likely the platelet will bind and make a clot so it stays liquid longer. Okay? That's the science behind there in a nutshell. Uh, but more importantly, one thing that I want to show here... So we're just going to do a oh, small little experiment. I'm going to go through this quickly here. Many, about two years ago, we were trying to figure out how fast these tubes fill with, with, uh, with blood or with water. So we were taking these tubes and just pumping them in water and we were counting. You know, how long does it take? 15 seconds, 12 seconds? And uh, one of our researchers did a study. Well, one thing was very interesting. You saw the water there that filled the tube. Some of these tubes, if anybody's ever used uh, these APRF tubes, and it's not all batches. Some of the batches, you know, we'd start filling them up with water and have a look at this. All these chemicals started to appear. Okay, and that was silicone. Okay, so it was uh, amazing for our group to see this because we said, holy geez, all of a sudden these, we're adding chemicals into our patients. And it wasn't always the way. So this was, this was something that, and, and something you should be careful of. Many of these tubes are, of course, produced in, in other countries, whether it be Thailand, China, these other places. And unfortunately, if you try and make a tube like this in the United States, they're about 6 $7 each. And that's what they quote you at. When you make them in China and, and Thailand, they're about a dollar each, and that's what people typically pay for. Uh, clinicians in general are unwilling to pay more than two, three dollars for these tubes to be made in, in better factories. And unfortunately, the quality control from some of these places is not optimized. So when you're using PRF, you know, and you're not sure or you're getting tubes from different places, fill them with a little bit of water, okay? And make sure that the foam that you just saw there didn't come up. This is the same company, the APRF tubes. And this was an older batch from 2017 that we had done a lot of research with. Look, you fill it with water, no chemicals. So some tubes have no chemicals. Some tubes are absolutely filled with chemicals. And of course, some people have had reported failures related to some of these chemical additives. And so you've seen people post online different things. Anybody experience increased risk of infection or pain, etc. And um, this was two years ago. Researchers started looking into this. And this paper here, Evidence for Contamination of Silica Microparticles in Advanced Platelet-Rich Fibrin Matrix Prepared Using Silica Coated Plastic Tubes. This, what you see right here, this is a researcher that made platelet-rich fibrin, took the PRF clot, put it in a Petri dish, enzymatically degraded all of the fibrin, and whatever was left over, he took SCMs of. And that's what was left over there, okay? That's pretty amazing. That's what these people were putting back into their patients. Okay, and no, I mean, you know, that's just up to the clinician really to make sure that they're not using these types of tubes. Um, just to highlight the differences here, uh, this is another little video. I'll just start playing it here, but okay, perfect. I'm not going to play the sound. I want to go through it rather quickly. This is red top tubes. These are all different. You know, to the naked eye, they all look the same but they're all very different in their hydrophilicity, in what kind of chemicals are added, how the glass is made, what kind of crystals are made. The tubes matter more than even the centrifuge you're gonna utilize for the production of platelet-rich fibrin. And I always say to people, the tubes are incredibly important. You buy these from 82 cents to $1.35, and that's what makes all the difference in how strong your clot is, how long it stays liquid. The tube decision-making for clinicians is very poor, uh, unfortunately. And that's where the level of knowledge with what you're using, everybody wants to know what kind of implant surfaces and on and on and on. Nobody gives a damn about the clots, okay, or the, the, the tube wall surfaces. They just say, well, it's red top, it must make, it must make membranes. 
and it's really not the case, okay? So in this video here, I just explain, um, and this is available for anybody that wants to watch it, I basically had my blood drawn, and we have different types of tubes here, APRF tubes, intraspin tubes, and glass tubes that were custom made by our research lab that were very hydrophilic and produced clots because we understand the science. So I had my blood drawn here. I'll, I'll turn it back on near the end here after the spin cycle. So usually, of course, after the spin cycle, so take a look at this. This is the plain glass tube. So that's okay. the one that we designed. After the spin Eight minutes. Okay, that's because of the tube technology. So that's whenever you change the actual design in the glass and you actually understand how the science works. That's a plain tube, right? There was nothing in this one. Expiration date. Okay, so that's that's where I think, you know, these things here are of course healthier than for patients. These are off label use, of course. Okay. But again, like I said, look at that. Okay, nothing is changing. Now if I take the interest spin, okay, it's still liquid. Okay, take a look at it. If I was to shift this, okay, of course it's going to ruin that sample. There's a clot that's there, of course, but... That was my blood that was drawn all at the exact same time. So that's how much the tubes matter. So if you're one of these clinicians and you have, you know, membranes that are smaller, they're still liquidy, uh, they're different sizes, etc., you're probably using the wrong tubes for the production of platelet-rich fibrin, and that's just a small piece of advice. When I shared that video, I had a lot of colleagues that just basically uh, made all these videos and posted them on, online and different things. You can tell right away, look, this person spun on a, on a horizontal, horizontal, this is fixed angle. Uh, just by looking at the tubes, I can tell what people are spinning on. And of course, you know, many of my, my colleagues, friends, etc., said, posted, you know, I got to admit these tubes are game changer, incredible results. They tried the tube. So there was a lot of positive um, outcomes related to the tube. So this is a horizontal centrifuge, nice big clot. You know, that's, that's understanding the technology, okay? At the very least, choose tubes that don't have chemicals inside and try and get some that are, of course, very hydrophilic. Now, the last thing that I'm going to explain is just related to the bioheat technology. So taking PRF, which only lasts two to three weeks, and having something that will now last four to six months. Okay? And the way that we do that is after the spin cycle, um, it separates into different layers with different protocols. Again, I don't have time to explain how we separate all these layers, but you can take the platelet pore plasma layer, which has a lot of albumin, and you can put it in a little heater, and we call this the bioheat device. You leave it there for 10 minutes, all of a sudden it changed the albumin conformation where instead of lasting two to three weeks, it'll now last four to six months, okay? So that's amazing for many different medical applications. And we use it over top of titanium meshes, for example, in large GBR procedures. Uh, people use it for uh, sinus grafting, closing windows. You can use it in substitute of collagen. And after you're finished cooking, it looks like this, okay? So it's changed the conformation. And um, we then take the liquid buffy coat layer that has all the cells and we mix it back in to make sure that it's not just something that has no cells. We, we heat up the albumin, change the conformation, take the cells from the buffy coat layers, re put back in the platelets and leukocytes and growth factors. Okay? Um, animal research has been done, so it was all done under FDA clearance with ISO uh, 10993 uh, is the exact protocols that were utilized for those that know what that is. But basically this animal has been implanted with PRF here on one side and then the albumin PRF on the other side. And this is representing four months after it's been implanted, okay? So I took something made from biology, there's no chemical additives at all, and then I can implant it and it lasts about four months. By six months, it's fully degraded. Uh, there's research that's trying to make it last longer, but uh, you know, still ongoing. But when you look at this, then you think of all the females in, in the world that are implanting chemicals in their faces as, bio as, as fillers, right? You get all these Juvederm and that, those, those are huge, huge, huge businesses. And um, now we can do this entirely biologically, okay? So that's obviously a big avenue of, of use uh, and one that we've been doing research on, okay? Um, the protocol, basically, you put it in the heater. After it's done, you have your albumin gel that's been heated, the liquid pure F. You're then gonna mix these back and forth together. Okay, so same thing we do with the antibiotics. On one side, we have the albumin gel. On the other side, the liquid PRF. 
pass this back and forth about 10 times and we did some of this uh, in the course we made a, a membrane uh, yesterday but you know it requires about four tubes of, of white cap tubes to do these protocols it's very straightforward it's very cheap in Bern Switzerland when we first started working with this um, we we would have one of the oral maxillofacial surgeons who was doing major surgery with titanium etc and titanium has a high risk of exposure so to prevent exposure we would always use platelet-rich fiber but now we can use this extended platelet-rich fiber is what we call it which will last four months which is basically the entire uh, healing period for some of these grafts um, it's great to use it uh, to exclude soft tissues and I highly recommend it. I know a lot of people in the audience use platelet-rich fibrin alone for extraction sites, which is fine. But the minute that you're missing any of the buccal plate or anything like that, you need some kind of barrier to prevent the soft tissue from infiltrating. And that's where this technology is quite useful. Okay? You can use it really to exclude. Um, and that's where we've created these custom trays here that can, can be utilized thereafter. Okay? Nowadays, what we can do is we make actually the sticky bone so this is the bone grafting material right here that you're normally used to working with, you know, quote unquote sticky bone, the PureF mixed with it, but it's now got an outer layer, extended PureF. So now I have a bone graft that's been created and I have an outer extended PureF layer. And when I go to do a, let's say a horizontal augmentation, I can take the sticky bone, put it on the bone and it's already got its outer layer that's built into it. Don't need to use collagen membranes, okay? So it's quite, uh, amazing. People use it for sinuses against the Snyderian membrane. I mean, there's a lot of applications that have been utilized since then. Okay. Um, in the textbook, these are just for those that are interested in some of these technologies, etc. The book will have all the protocols in picture form, and then it's got the little QR code with the video. You, you put your phone over this, this video for how to produce all this stuff will come right up. Okay. And we did it as a way to try and get more knowledge into the community and allow them to be able to utilize these techniques. Again, anything you want to make, the biograft, we explain the protocol with pictures or sticky bone. There's always going to be these little QR codes that are there. The book is just about ready to get printed, um, so it's, it's uh, near completion. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over this. Okay, when we make the bio bone, this is very... Those are just the videos. Uh, I just want to skip through this part because I only have five minutes left. This technology is heavily utilized right now at the Mayo Clinic, okay? So the ability to extend the working properties of platelet-rich fibrin, uh, the Mayo Clinic was very interested in this stuff for knee injections, for spinal injections. I always like to give this guy's info. A lot of dentists have gone personally to visit him. If you have knee pain, a spine, etc., He and I have been doing a lot of research for some time on, amazingly, he's injecting the albumin PRF into intervertebral discs and repairing them, okay? So he's been just amazed at the differences. When they have some of these disc issues, and these are major problems, you know, some of these people can hardly walk. Um, and he's been using microscopes and endoscopes, etc. and he goes in there non-surgically and repairs the whole thing using this, this albumin pure F. I mean, it's just amazing when you see these uh, results that are occurring here. And I think that will be a big thing in, in sports medicine, etc. to use this technology. A um, little video here on how we use it in the aesthetics, uh, facial aesthetics. So here's my clinic. So we're just going to do go over what the bioheat looks like. So here's the machine and device. Um, the liquid pure F, of course, looks very different. When this comes out, you can see it's a lot more gel-like. So this is just an extra one that we have from the, the patient that we're working on. I just wanted to show people what it looks like because it's very different in consistency. Okay? When you look at it, it looks a lot it more like, like, fat almost like fat tissue. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we're going to inject into our patients. Either we make membranes or we can inject this as biological fillers into the skin. Okay, so that's actually what we inject uh, into patients. It lasts about half a year. Depending on where you inject it, it'll resorb faster in certain areas. So where you've got all these big research projects ongoing. Um, you know, it's a very exciting technology for those that are involved in this field, and I want to kind of share some of our experiences with this. You know, a lady like this, we can easily knock 10, 15 years off her face without using a single chemical. So no Botox, no, no chemical fillers, no nothing. 
And this was done using lasers technology to stimulate the tissues, as well as uh, some injections with the bioheat uh, technology. And uh, you can see a dramatic difference when I look at her marionette lines, et cetera. That's all done entirely naturally, okay? And um, as a result of kind of all this technology in PRF, Quintessence actually wanted us to write a textbook in that space. And that's probably one of the fastest growing markets actually, and many dentists are doing these procedures now. Um, I'll explain kind of my own personal opinion because I did a lot of perio work, and when we started launching doing some of these facial procedures in Sarasota, Florida, as you can imagine, I was busier than busy uh, doing this stuff. And uh, I always give the example, you know, if you take 100 people or 100 patients that walk in your clinic, maybe three or four of them need implants, but probably 75 of them are going to want to look younger. And out of the 50 women, 50 women will say, hey, let's do this, right? So the market's obviously very big, and there's big profitability in, in doing this stuff. Um, for those that want to learn more, like I said, Catherine Davies, a plastic surgeon, and she wrote this textbook with me. She wrote all the chapters on injections. I have a copy here for those that want to see what it looks like or are interested in this field. And just to go over this, you know, I remember discussing this with Quintessence. Quintessence told me, write a, write a textbook, Dr. Myron, for facial aesthetics. I was like, no, I don't want to. That's not my thing. And they said, Dr. Myron, write a textbook. I said, why? They say, Dr. Myron, I know you're great in biomaterials, but you're also great in PRF. I just want to show you these figures. They put this display up. They say, this is the implant market. It's around four to seven billion per year, and it's growing at a rate of about 9% per year, okay? In fact, he said, all of dentistry is about a $25 billion a year industry, of which the largest industry in, in uh, dentistry is cosmetic, okay? It's crowns, veneers, uh, these orthodontics. That dominates the market. Number two is implants, and then everything else fills this 25 uh, uh, billion. When you look at the facial aesthetic market, he said it's a $118 billion industry, okay? So he showed these figures of where we're at today and where it's going, um, and you realize very quickly that, you know, it's a much bigger industry in the facial aesthetic field. And as dentists, of course, in most states, apart from maybe California, a few others, there, you can do this. It's part of your license. And, um, you know, I always said, out of everybody that we train in our courses with Pure F, dentists are by far the best injectors. And even the plastic surgeon, Catherine Davies, say the same thing. And I tell her, well, Kathy, we're doing all of these injections in complex areas in the mouth all day long. Many of these nurses or medical doctors who have not done an injection for 15 years, they want to jump into the industry and open up these med spas, et cetera, because that market is so big, right? So many people are joining that market. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity for dentists to be involved in some of this stuff because when you look at somebody's uh, facial appearance, of course, the smile is most important. So you look at the rankings, what's attractive to people. The smile is usually ranked number one, and that's the dentist job. Um, and then the other stuff relating what you're doing with the smile with you know, other things that you can do and are within your scope of practice and are 100% natural, you know, there's huge opportunities there. Um, this is Dr. Davies. Like I said, she's a plastic surgeon. She teaches with us. Great educator for anybody that wants to learn this stuff. The book is very well done. Uh, she put it together. There's outstanding drawings that were done um, by Quintessence just explaining anatomy um, and how to do the injection techniques. There's scales to measure people's aging. And the goal is to try and reverse aging all naturally. So for those that work with PRF, you've seen it heals, it heals well. Soft tissues heal very well when you use PRF in your surgeries. Well, imagine you can take that technology and put that on somebody's face or inject it and it heals just as well, okay? And so there's, there's really a huge uh, potential and I always say dentists are kind of at the forefront for a lot of this PRF research. Oops, okay? The injection techniques are so easy. Um, you know, imagine as a dentist all the things we do and then they tell you, look, what you need to do is draw a line here, here. You need to go right to the bone, straight line, and then inject right? And you fill the cheekbones. I mean, some of these injections are just insanely easy and they actually lead to very nice outcomes, okay? So we, we teach how to do these uh, courses. Dr. Davies teaches all the injection stuff. I do it on a, uh, basically every day in my practice now. There's patients that come in for facial aesthetics and uh, we use a combination of lasers with PRF. We charge patients literally $1,400 to these procedures that take an hour and the amount of money we spend doing them is literally like $10 or less and I do two, two chairs at a time, okay? I can do two patients, hop from room to room, 
and the girls that I work with, the assistants, draw the blood, get everything ready. I mean, it's very easy. It's low stress. There's no complications. And the amazing thing is that when you're finished with an implant case or a gingival grafting procedure, or let's say I've taken a pocket from seven millimeters and I brought it down to three millimeters, I'm like, yes, it worked, you know, all this great feelings. Your patient doesn't really care that much. They're like, okay, doc, pocket seven millimeters. Yeah, but I just did like a great thing for you. You're gonna maintain and save your teeth. They don't really care. You take a woman and you knock 10 years off her life, she's thanking you, she's hugging you, she's bringing you cookies. I mean, it's just, it's a totally different thing. And they're coming back every six months to get the update. So it's continual business. You know, you're getting $1,400 every six months and um, there's very low risk to it. That's Dr. Schiffman. He, he taught me how to use lasers. His courses are fantastic. Um, and we use the lasers, so we'll actually use the lasers here. Okay, do laser peels. There's microneedling here that's been done. So anybody that wants to learn these technologies, they're amazingly uh, simple, okay? You can actually use the laser now and deliver energy intraorally. So instead of firing extraorally, and let's say you want to treat these nasolabial folds, I can actually do all that intraorally. A patient can go right back to work with absolutely no downtime. I treat everything intraorally. We do that. We do a lot of combination approaches with PRF injections. I mean. Um, even some of these age spots removals, like I said, this is very easy. People that have age I'm spots. Just, I'm just gonna kind of just paint it. I'll just kind of see it disappear. Okay. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I can. Focus. There we go. Focus. When we do gonna, these procedures here, I just oh, I'm screwing this up. Focus. Focus. I'm just gonna kind of. I want to get this video here on. The way that we remove these age spots is literally. With an Erbium YAG laser, it's a blading tissue. So you can literally go to these dark spots and just layer by layer remove these age spots. It's very easy to do. I mean, it doesn't require any intelligence at all. It's very, very easy to do. And, you know, women, when you remove some of these age spots, they, they come to you and it's amazing because I'll give them a mirror and I'll say, look, we'll do one of them. And a lady will come in saying, well, I got two of them here that I want to remove. You remove them, and then all of a sudden, lady's like, well, I have one here, 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 over here. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's amazing, this field. Like I said, it's very easy. And, you know, this is just some of the procedures we do where this lady has all these age spots. You can get rid of those very easily, um, as well as moles and other things. You know, the ability to use platelet-rich fibrin with the healing, when you look at a case like this, acne, infection, this, these people will take a lot of meds with Accutane, etc. And I always say to people, before you put a child on Accutane, which is a very strong drug, you know, you can just do microneedling with platelet-rich fibrin. You know, you just, you pump in with those little needles, all the growth factors in your blood, the leukocytes, look at the results. Okay, this is a 35-year-old, you've really changed this guy's life. So all these kids, like I said, this was a patient of Dr. Panapur, one of our educators. You do these procedures with microneedling, this girl wouldn't even leave her house. She was so embarrassed and scared to go out in public. You know, mom's thinking, do I put her on Accutane, get her back to normal? Answer, just do three therapies with platelet-rich fibrin. You know, you can really make a dramatic result. That's all natural, okay? Uh, it's very straightforward to do. Um, I'm gonna quickly fi finish up here. You know, after we've done microneedling, a lot of ladies, for example, will lose a lot of volume uh, in these areas. You know, those can easily be treated. Like I said, these injection techniques are very, very straightforward, um, and uh, that's how we can lead to some of these results. Now, small piece of advice over the last two minutes, if you're gonna do this, because I've done it in my practice, um, I don't own my practice. I work for, uh, for those that know Valerie Cantor, I actually work for her dad. So she's in a long line of, of uh, dentists and I work for his, his practice. And that's in Sarasota, it's Lakewood Ranch Dental. And when we started doing this, it was very hard to be like Lakewood Ranch Dental doing facial aesthetic procedures. So if we ran some ads on Facebook, you know, we weren't getting a lot of uh, attraction towards that because it was kind of weird, you know, dentists doing these things, even, even as well known I am in the PRF world. And so we just rebranded it. And so we created actually, and I recommend if you want to get involved in this field, because it's just a huge market. Like I said, there's a huge opportunity uh, for everybody in this room to do this along with dentistry. We rebranded it as Center for Advanced Rejuvenation and Aesthetics. And we just market no chemicals, no fillers, all natural regenerative strategies for facial aesthetics. Just those, that message with no chemicals and no fillers is so powerful to the average public because there's so many women that have 
either they don't want to have any chemicals inside them, they've had a bad experience with Botox or some kind of filler, and you can utilize this technology uh, and regenerate the skin naturally, which is kind of cool. And so we started running these ads. This is a little 20 second ad here that you can see. What if we told you that your body can heal itself, leaving your skin rejuvenated and you looking years younger? BioLift uses three therapies to regenerate and lift your skin 100% naturally. Get amazing results today. Okay, so we just ran simple ads like that with a little free, uh, you know, consultation. Well, you know, we have literally 10 to 12 new patients every week that come in. They just want to learn more. What is it? They see some before and afters, and then away you go in your practice. Like I said, very, very profitable. Um, we actually run a program now for those that are interested. We call it just follow. It's basically follow the doctors where you can come literally to our clinic. We only take four doctors at a time. You come in on a Monday, Tuesday, and see exactly how we do it how it's set up, what our girls do, uh, and, and basically all the procedures. Of course, you need a laser, so you need a, a light walker, a Fatona laser, to do some of these procedures, as well as PRF. You need these technologies. But then you can go all natural. I remember the day that we set this all up, and uh, it's been, like I said, a game changer for our practice, and we're able to uh, do a lot of different procedures now. For those that are a little bit older, for those that you know they uh, don't want to do dentistry anymore, or want a change of pace, etc., this is a great field to to get into. Um, last thing that I wanted to say was that we actually decided, you know, when it was built, I had one of my buddies who was an educator with me, and he said, "Well, can I use all your marketing material in Cleveland?" I said, "Sure." I said, "I'm only running my ads, my little 15." Uh, mile radius from my office. I said, go for it. So we gave him the ability to become a kerosetic provider in Cleveland. And so this is Dr. Kowski here located in Kerosetics Cleveland. They get all the marketing material and he started doing the exact same thing, running the same ads that we're running. I just built the entire platform. I said, well, why not share it with other colleagues and try and team up and take over the market versus med spas? Right? Because dentists are definitely more educated and they can do these procedures absolutely better than any other profession, even compared to medical doctors, I would say, because we're so good at head and neck anatomy and with injections. The difference is, is that you're lacking the marketing. So if anybody's interested, come speak to me and I'll share with you how, you know, once you get the training and the lasers and PRF, we just make you a kerosetic provider in your city and then away you go from there. Okay? So people can come to my booth. Uh, if you're interested in this field. So that's everything. Uh, thank you for your attention. Sorry I went a little bit over. Um, and I'll be here for the next two days if anybody has questions to ask me. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dr. Myron. I uh, have one little piece of housekeeping we have to do for you. I need you to just real quickly here read the uh, AGD disclaimer, which is down here. We have to make everybody do this. Okay. <laughs> uh, I do not have a financial interest of product in my talk with the uh, companies offering grant monies for this continual education. I, I actually own Kerasthetics, but uh, just if so anybody... So you do have an interest? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I own Kerasthetics, so... It's but, a good interest, but it's... Okay. Yeah. I just want to make that uh, very transparent, yeah. All right. 